Just because you can afford a supercar doesn't mean you can afford to fix it. Today, we're here with real mechanics reacting to rich people doing dumb things in fancy cars and breaking down what they did wrong. First clip. Okay, we got a Aventador. An Aventador. Lots of guys with lots of guys with khakis. Uh oh, something caught fire. No, something caught fire. That's not where that's supposed to come from. Looks sick though, right? Sure, and I'm sure it sounded great, which is probably what happened there. Um, I'm guessing a little uh, left foot brake, right foot throttle, showing off for the crowd. Uh, uh. Overheated or blew something. Isn't that car all wheel drive? Yes. All those clutches in there are not gonna love that. My name is Michael Koenig, and I spent a decade teaching people how to drive really fast, really expensive cars. The engine's back here, it needs cooling to go through it. So if you're just giving it full throttle, heating up the engine, mm -hmm. and it's not moving at all, something's gonna pop, whether that's a coolant, actual clutch packs could be burning at that point. Smoke is coming from the middle. I'm guessing it's probably a uh, transmission side. But yeah, that's a lot of heat going into that big old fast car without any airflow at all. Big old fast car is correct. Yeah. <laughs> So it's always gonna be like at least a thousand bucks, fifteen hundred. Why is that? Because you got flat tow it. Yeah, you okay. gotta get a special tow truck to do that. Ugh, Straight up. Brutal. And then after that, whoever's gonna check it, it's gonna come up with a suit. <laughs> if you want me to take the suit off just to check that, it's gonna be like fifteen hundred. What's up, guys? My name is Sandro. Bring your fancy cars, maybe. <laughs> okay, bring it. We'll try. It. <laughs> On something like the Ventadors, you're probably talking full engine out service, Ooh. rebuild parts. I've even heard stories of like, the adjuster sees a video of this and he's just like, I'll just write you a check, just send me the car. You are not responsible enough for this vehicle. Your insurance will be taking it now. Yep. Thank you. Next clip. Abandoned Lamborghini <laughs> Countach collecting dust in Dubai. Oh yeah. Oh, just that. sitting there chilling in Dubai? Yeah. Come on. That's because people, like they go in debt so much that they leave those cars. They leave their houses, they leave everything because you could go to jail for being in debt. What? Yeah. You go to jail for that? You go to jail for so that. So you just leave the car? Hell yeah, I'll leave that Lamborghini. And then leave yeah. the country? Leave the country. Like at some point, somebody's just got to go over there with a truck and start picking them up because there's no way they're tracking Well, these. why has no one done that? I don't know. Like, can you imagine just like me and you roll up just the way we're looking <laughs> in Dubai and we're just like, hey, can we get a flatbed to yeah. just grab this thing? Like, we're taking that shit. Whose car is it? Like, don't worry about don't it. Worry. <laughs> it's my car now. <laughs> it's my car. Start writing your name on the windshield. It's all dirty. Mine. What kind of damage comes from long-term exposure to dust and sand out in the desert? Anything that's rubber on that car is pretty much destroyed now, right? It dries out from the heat, uh -huh. from the sand, all of that. I would assume everything in the engine has sucked up a bunch of sand and everything. You know, the interior is probably not mildewy, thankfully. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. probably super dry, but everything's just ready to crumble as soon as you go in there. And yeah. so on the engine side, that's talking about like a lot of the gaskets and everything. There's people, they charge thousands of dollars for details on these cars. Yeah. Why? Because you're gonna sure. sell it for a lot of money. Full detail, paint correction. Yeah. It is the thing, like when you're looking for a car that you wanna restore, you go to the desert because the moisture is what makes mm -hmm. cars a pain in the butt to yep. work on. What's the first step you do when you're trying to get an abandoned car running again? Checking your brakes, make sure that the actual caliper, the, the seals are not giving out. You oh. want to be able to stop before you get things going. Yeah, clean out the tanks, clean out the fuel lines, mm -hmm. fuel filters, fuel filter. injectors, yeah. so on and so forth. But then you got a million plus dollar car. Oh, hell yeah. Multi-million dollar car. I don't know what Countach is called. I'll push that down the block <laughs> and feel like it's cool. We actually did a video about why there's so many cars getting abandoned in Dubai. But before you click over there. <sighs> Having a broken engine is a lot like having debt. It can be hard to fix, leave you feeling stuck, and honestly be a little embarrassing. But with today's sponsor, PDS Debt, you can be debt free in a matter of months. Right now they're offering free debt analysis and it only takes 30 seconds. Whether you've got medical bills, credit cards, or loan payments, take your first step towards financial freedom with PDS Debt. They'll tell you everything you need to know about your estimated savings, eligible creditors, and additional program details. You can even get help with options like consolidation loans, credit counseling, and debt management. If that all sounds too good to be true, just remember that PDS Debt is a top-rated company on Google and has an a rating on the Better Business Bureau. So take advantage of their 30-second free debt analysis and get back on track in a matter of months. I might not be able to fix this engine, but you can fix your debt. So head on over to pdsdebt.com slash RMS to get your free debt assessment today. 
Let's see our next clip. The first service is $25,000. You need a new set of tires every 16 months or so. That's $8,000 a pop. You need to oh. replace the wheels every 10,000 miles. That's oh. 50,000 bucks. What? You have to get the brakes Replace the, the wheels? That's $118,000. What? $1, the quad turbos are uh, at $26,000. Ah. Uh, fuel tank, air duct, cooler kit, engine tuning and calibration. Uh, Camshafts need to be adjusted. That's a total of almost a half a million dollars uh, in the course of four years. Why? That's insane. Yeah, that's a bunch of cool Civics. Yeah, yeah that's a lot of cars. <laughs> <laughs> See, just mean as you get a f house. I'm in the wrong business. $25,000 oil change is absurd. That's absurd. What are they pouring gold into it? I think so. Oh. Liquid gold? And that's just a normal service. That's not even the, I took it to the airport and did 230 miles per hour service. That's almost a double for that. That's another service? Mm -hmm. Remember kids, when you buy a supercar, you're actually buying two of them. The one you drive and the one you service. <laughs> because of the way the wheels and tires are designed, the way the brakes are designed, they're meant to hold up to a high speed event and mm -hmm. come down from it safely, but real only once or twice. Oh. So if you take these things that are maximum speed and then come off, like you're pretty much going through the tires right away, you're going through the brake pads right away. The oil is gonna get to a temperature that starts to degrade. All of these things that's designed to be able to do, it does, but everything around it is basically a consumable and you're just consuming really fast. Are you telling me the reason we haven't hit 300 mile an hour on the streetcar yet is because of tires and oil? Definitely on the tire side, that was definitely a constraint for a long time. On the oil side, not so much. They've got that figured out. It just makes it really, really expensive. A lot of the most expensive cars out there have specialized technicians that are the right. ones that not only have to do this, but like this service, you pretty much have to ship this back to Bugatti. And so on top of all of this, think about the air freight to send your Chiron back to yeah, the motherland of sure. where it came from and then have it shipped back to you. Oh my goodness. 8,000 for a set of tires, two grand a tire. That seems like, all right. Is that all right? Really? The th well, the thing that's crazy is you got to replace the wheels? What? That's nuts. So if these wheels, which are meant to be lightweight and still structural and strong though, there's a hairline crack in one of them, you don't want that to come apart during when you're going 220, 230 miles So is the metal degrading over time? Not necessarily, it's more of a check. Like this is definitely more what you would consider preventative maintenance, I guess. Got you. Okay. It's just so they, very expensive. The thing I'm thinking of is, yo, let me be the guy who tests that out. Exactly, I was gonna say, <laughs> we read it, I was gonna say the same thing. Let me I'm gonna learn how to do that, just to test it out though. Yeah, you would do the oil change. After you do all the work, I'll test drive it. I'll be like, I'm gonna do a little test. I like it. <laughs> it's not worth it, people. Buy old Toyotas. So I'll show you guys what I think is the worst part about a McLaren. Okay. If you open the trunk button, which is on the door. The trunk right button's here. on the door, cool, mm -hmm. okay. So this is how much room McLaren gives you to work on their engine. Oh, oh, brutal. That okay. is it. All the other work you have to do from the bottom of the car, but this is basically useless. You can only fill coolant and washer fluid and oil. That's about it. It's not meant for you to play with. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dog. Oh, I'm sorry. This guy's treated like, hey, the worst part is I get, yeah. don't get to work on my McLaren. Well. Buy yourself a classic. <laughs> yeah. Buy that. Yeah, do buy yourself with something that's got a hood yeah. that's like 15 feet long. That's you for can you put to put a whole family in that. Yeah, that's for you to park in front of your house so people <laughs> see that you have money. All right, I got the I got the million dollar question. Why do you think McLaren made it this way? Hmm. <laughs> you know why. <laughs> yeah, you know why. Mm. Look all greedy right here, like. Oh, you wanna buy a McLaren? <laughs> you wanna work on it yourself? Oh, I'm sorry. Let us send you to the you give us more money department. You know it. <laughs> These cars have really, really big high performance engines in them and they need cooling directed to them. They need to be sitting low in the car. And so they basically take a chassis and an engine and then just shape the body around it. And so that kind of prevents a lot of room in there to move around. Engine out service is pretty typical on any of these supercars, especially on all the McLarens. The number of videos that pop up on the internet of people trying to work on their own supercars, like if you can afford a supercar, you should afford to have a technician. Which supercars would you oh. say are the worst to service? I mean, anything that's mid-engine, like you're literally taking- All of them? As engines got smaller but flatter, they had to get wider, and therefore the body has to come tighter to that engine. That starts limiting some of the access. Okay, next clip. Do not rev your engine on a cold start in the morning or when you run out of fuel. Uh oh. Shut off. Yep. Don't rev the engine. Okay, so we got a cold start on a Ferrari and this guy's revving the engine. Yeah. Not good. No, it has sensors for the gas. And it's telling you don't do that. Uh -huh. So it shuts it off. 
Oh, okay, that's kind of smart. Yeah. If the engine's been sitting all night and it's especially cold, the engine's kind of dripped down to the bottom of the motor and the oil pan, and it's gotten cold, so it's gotten a little more solid than mm. normal. The car's designed to work around that. You actually, when you cold start a supercar, it actually does a high rev initially and then drops its idle down real quick. And the high rev is to kind of break everything loose and to make sure you can kick it up and get that oil splash, but right. then it drops it down so there's less friction, less heat. If you get in there right away and start pumping that throttle because you think you're that cool guy, you're now rubbing metal on metal instead of having that lubrication in between. Remember, lube properly. Lube it up or you'll screw it up. But with a car like, I don't know, a Civic, you start that thing up. You just let it rev to the moon. <laughs> yeah, dude, it don't matter. So supercars are a little bit finicky. They need a little bit of love to get going. But good old Japanese Civic? They'll run dry. Pin it to win it. <laughs> they run dry. All right, next clip. Uh-oh. Uh, four by? No! No! Four, no! four by? Dude, get out of here. No, dude. Dude, that's a jump. Oh, that is a Dude, he's jumping it. That's yeah. sick as hell. <laughs> Did he pop the bags? Did he pop How it? How big is it? The obvious one, the under tray, 613 pound. The snapped off bracket, 32 pound. This bent clip, that's pretty six cheap. pound. That's pretty cheap. Duct, 58 pound. For a we're not, we're doing all right. Of 700 and oh, totally worth pounds. It. Less than a thousand dollars. Less than a thousand dollars. For if to jump that high and get it on video. Not bad though. Dude, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's a pretty good deal. Uh, look at that. I mean, look Dude, at that. that is sick. That's like a poster. sick. <laughs> That's great. Congratulations, Good man. job, Lamborghini. You did well, and kudos to Lamborghini. I want one. But I mean, if it's a regular f***ing <laughs> city, that, that thousand bucks is, yeah, yeah the yeah. whole car would probably give oh. out. <laughs> yeah. If we're talking a normal car, you're definitely blowing out shocks. You're definitely running those wheels up into fenders. You're doing body damage. So yeah, you're probably doing $10,000 worth of damage when it's all said and done. And this was only 900 bucks. Yeah. So if you want to jump something, get a Lamborghini. Next clip. All right, I see a four and eight. Oh, oh yep, ah. yep, yep. Oh, oh brutal, oh, brutal. Oh. Honestly, that's a lot of money. That's a, dude, that that's he a told the car. Money. Yeah. You know what, it kind of reminds me of you. What was that? When you hopped off right there. <laughs> you remember when we were on the track? In the Civic? Yeah. Yeah, but I was under control. That was planned. Dog. Oh, okay. <laughs> that was planned. That jump was planned. <laughs> this was not a... Hey, but no lie, you look good, though. I look you pretty look good. good. You I look, look good. pretty good. I was you going for the pass, man. I had to do it. It was the yeah. last couple laps. I had to make something happen. This guy just, <laughs> just went. He had, to, he had to do something, too. He had to like, do something, too. He had to show off, apparently. And it looks like... A, Early morning, cold place. Yes, yeah, so you got cold tires, cold road, maybe traction control turned off. Mm -hmm. A lot of it comes down to weight transfer. These are such light cars with such heavy horsepower that as soon as you mash the throttle, you're pushing all the weight to the back. And it's okay, because it's gonna slip a little bit. The car is actually designed to be able to give you a little bit of that slip angle. It scares the sh out of people. And so as soon as it starts to slip and they let go of the throttle, sends all the weight back to the front, and now you've got no traction on the rear. And now you're just along for the ride. Show them how it's done. Okay, this is what you do, okay? You see, you're inside here, you're like, hey baby, I love you, you're my Ferrari. I'm gonna give you what you want, which is full gas. So it starts going like this, right? So the car's kind of squatting down, and even though it's fish sailing a little bit, it's got really good traction. Mm -hmm. But if you get scared at all, and you come all the way off that throttle, the car actually does this. And now you've got nothing back here but a free ride to that curb. Just let it eat. It's okay. It's just going to sit there and burn out a little bit. That, and that. then just counter steer and just sit in it and just let it eat. And then when you correct, it'll snap too. Just let the wheels go forward. He's doing too many inputs in the car and it's causing drama. This thing just wants to go go straight and go fast. Yeah, finesse. Right? Finesse. How much would this cost, you think? Cost of the car, right? Yeah, yeah. a lot. Yeah. Probably like. <laughs> I don't know, two houses, <laughs> house and a half. Yeah. That's where you're buying your real estate at. But yeah, I mean, house and a half yeah. worth of damage, yeah. Next clip. Oh, boys, boys. Yo, is this the is this the flooded? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yo, this is Tavares's car. So a bit of context. This is a two million dollar McLaren P1, and it got flooded because of Hurricane Ian back in 2022. Now, would you ever uh, buy a car like this and try to flip it? Would you even touch this with a 10 foot pole if you knew it was this I much damage? I don't like water cars. I don't like boats. I wouldn't, Yeah. but I don't have enough followers on the internet to justify that. <laughs> P1's a hybrid, so you have battery oh, pack in there. Oh yeah. I forgot about oh, that. Yeah. 
Yep. So batteries and water, not great, especially seawater, salt water. So you're probably gonna have to deal with all the corrosion and everything electrical. Replace the battery packs. I think it's endless. <laughs> Dash, motor, everything. If say you did all that, you think you'd be able to make your money back? Well, if it's two million and I put 300 or 500, then yes. But then the salvage title value. That's what I'm saying, it's salvage title. Maybe 1.2. You think so? So you probably make like 500? Well, that, that's that's sounded, pretty that's good. Pretty bad. That's, that's a pretty, pretty bad. good. That's a pretty good get. I don't think someone would pay a million bucks for this. I think that's too may, much money. May, maybe somebody will. If yeah. it's number whatever from oh, how many sure. there is, then they probably will. And that's what's cool about these VG engines. They were super overbuilt. Hey, do you think the turbo is the adrenaline gland of the car? Engine is the heart, oil, is the blood. Are the drive shafts the legs or is it the axles? It's the axles. But I'm willing to admit the bumper is the butt if you admit that the CV joint is the knee. Hey, just so you know, the meeting was canceled. Amazing. The tailpipe is the butthole. <laughs> anyway, during the late 90s, Nissan Speaking of YouTubers that restore salvaged supercars, here's a clip from Matt Armstrong. Cool guy. The only thing Lamborghini about this climate control is the badge. Yeah, that For looks a brand cheap. new one from Lamborghini, it's gonna cost you 1,513 pounds of 51 p. But I'm not too worried if mine breaks because this is a Rover 45, which uses the exact same climate control <laughs> as a Lamborghini Murcielago. And one of them is only 24 euros. Let's 20, go. Around 20 quid. And they also use it in the Pagani Zonda. Millions of pound worth of car. The more you know. If you buy a new Murcielago, mm. you're buying it for the suspension, you're buying it for the shape, the looks, you're buying it for the engine, the sound. Cars do that all the time. They can't make everything bespoke and super fancy, especially the radio. You're not trying to listen to anything when you're driving these cars. At least I wouldn't be. I want to listen to that engine. That's actually pretty tight. It's, it's tight, tight that he tight? found out. If you're a rich guy and you're like, hold on, you're putting a $20 thing in my car and it's you're charging me $1,500 for it. Uh, but also if you have that much money, you're like, whatever, dude, you think I care about that? You think That's I care about 1500 bucks? I'm rich. I piss gold. I'm a golden goose. Here's a little cup, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Aston Martin is uh, really well known for this, where you know 70% of an Aston Martin is just four parts bin parts with a really sexy body around it yep. and a really good engine. All right, next clip. Okay, blame the valet. Is this a valet driving it? Oh, yeah. no. It's all clutch. Oh. It's a clutch. It's a clutch. Oh, yeah, you burned the hell out of that clutch, man. What's up? We got a Lamborghini here, a valet, burned the clutch up a little bit. You saw the clutch smoke. That's not cheap. He was also standing. He's doing I see this. this all the time. Which means you're barely touching the clutch pedal. Bingo. You have no feel on the throttle. And even if you're just a quarter throttle and barely letting the clutch out. And so that's the thing, right? It's not about him over revving. He could actually be under revving and then slipping the clutch just enough. And if those two are just spinning on each other, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much what that is. Like you heard in the clip, there was a little bit of that hurt. That was the sound of that clutch glazing. It could be that it was giving out already, mm -hmm. but unfortunately this guy drove it and they're gonna blame him at the end. Oh, I mean, brutal. It's one of those things like, yeah, it's the valet's fault it happened, but I'd say it's the owner's fault for giving that situation to itself. I'm always a big advocate for valet your own supercars. Like the valet will totally let you do it, especially if you give them a tip of like, you tell me where to park it, I'll park it there and you hold onto the keys. Sorry, Valley guy, I hope you didn't have to pay for it. Now this next clip comes to us from our friend Turbo Joe. It shows what happens when a tuner in an old Ford races against a rich guy with a McLaren at the drag strip. Old Ford, old Ford, old Ford, old Ford. Old Ford. Yeah. There's okay, we got a tuner in an old Ford truck. Sexy ass Ford. Yeah. Uh-oh. Wee! That foot didn't catch up at all. <laughs> it gives a f jump. Look at that. Now the McLaren's there. <laughs> it's all about that top end. Yeah. 
Pretty good. He Good had them 95% of the way. Most supercars aren't actually built around torque. They're built around horsepower. It's not about getting out of the hole. Mm -hmm. It's all about the top end. Exactly. Yep. That's yep. why you don't take them to the drag strip. Yes. Or would you rather own the McLaren or the old F100? I think I'm going to take the McLaren. F100. <laughs> all day, all day, every yeah. day. Because of watch. After that, you can go to work. If you want to see Turbo Joe, the guy we just saw in that truck, react to actual customer statements that are a nightmare for mechanics to deal with, Click right here. Y'all have a good one.